In this video, we will see how it's possible to use the new Fracture tool and bullet to quickly create a dynamic simulation of an object cracking to the ground. First, let's create a subdivided box. You may ask why I am subdividing it. Well, there are some very simple rules to follow if we want to get the correct fracturing of our mesh when using the Fracture tool. First, the size of each polygon should be pretty regular, so no usually different sized polygons should be present in the mesh, otherwise we could get some errors. No open meshes are allowed. That means that objects should be always perfectly closed. And finally, we have to be sure no overlapping objects are present in the layer. Let's go on saving our object and using the Fracture tool. We can find the Fracture tool under the Multiply menu. We have several options fully covered in the manual. We can decide the name of the interior surface that will be generated and specify a random seed to get different results. Preserve Original will keep the original mesh while creating the Fracture 1 in a new layer or a new object. We can even decide if we want every single part distributed in different layers. The Explode Parts is very useful to immediately check the results of our fracturing. It creates a morph of the exploded mesh that can be used in layout. We can use several methods for fracturing. In this video we will use the Voronoi algorithm, probably the most powerful of the three available in the Fracture tool. Let's press OK so we can see the result. Voronoi is really fast. In no time, we get our object fractured. We want to use bullet with this object, so let's create a ground plane we will use in the dynamic simulation. Let's rename our layers properly. Layer 1 is our base object, layer 2 our fractured object, and layer 3 our ground plane. Let's send them to layout. Once in layout, we can move the first layer out of the view, or delete it, and make the ground plane a static body and the fractured layer a parse body. Let's play the animation. Our object falls down in pieces as it impacts the ground. We can change the collision margin to something different than zero to improve the quality of the simulation, which is already pretty good anyway. With the parts body selected, let's set the glue strand to 100% and the breaking angle to 5 degrees and rotate and move the object in another position so we can control the breaking on the impact point. If we play the simulation we may notice that the object doesn't break. So let's raise up the object a little bit and low down the breaking angle to 2 degrees. Now the mesh is breaking up realistically as it eats the ground. If we want, we can even clone the fracture object and simulate again and see how everything is interacting correctly. We can activate VPR to check how our simulation looks in the real-time renderer. We can even play the animation with the VPR active and see the result in real-time. Let's make this scene more pretty, enabling the background color gradient and the radiosity. We can even disable the interpolated radiosity and take a look at the render using a pure Monte Carlo GI solution. It renders pretty fast even on my laptop. Back in Modeler, let's create some spheres that we will use to control the fracturing using the Use Background Layer Polys option available in the Fracture tool. This option let us define a more dense fracturing in relation to the distance from the center of the objects in the background. I'll increase the cell count up to 256 so to get a good number of fractured parts in the objects. It is a very intuitive way to define the density of our fracture as we can see in the final result. Let's copy the new fractured object in layer 2 and let's go back in layout. Once back in layout, we can hit play 
and see how our object has been automatically updated and used in the dynamic simulation. Let's go back in Modeler and take a look at the Use Background Layer Points option. We can create some points in a new layer that will be used to define the density of the fracturing. In this specific case, I'm using the Spray Points tool. Let's change the Voronoi Fracture option to Use Background Layer Points. You can see now how the fracture density has been defined by the position of the points we created in the background layer. Let's copy-paste layer 4 and layer 2 again and go back and lay out. We can now play the animation and see the result. The Fracture tool is the perfect companion of the new Bullet Dynamics system in Lightwave 11. Artists can produce complex, spectacular and accurate destruction scenes in a very little amount of time and, most importantly, having fun while doing it.